you tell me, have there been any early discoveries in, in the research? Sure. So let me start by saying that uh, we're also honored and very privileged to do this research in the uh, effort and funding that you have uh, garnered has been extremely helpful. Um, and we've already had some initial results. Um, so we are doing what I call a molecular deep dive, meaning very sophisticated analysis on a fairly large set of tumors. Uh, we've already been able to characterize some of the mutational events that occur in carcinosarcomas coming from the ovary and coming from the uterus. Uh, they aren't necessarily the same. Some of those events are going to be what I call targetable, meaning that they may be molecular events that we can treat. So that's exciting. It's also important to note that uh, we are characterizing the gene expression patterns of these tumors and have early data to suggest that the way the DNA is packaged in these tumors is actually quite important for their development and progression. Can you, can you uh, expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so there's a lot of ways in which normal tissue becomes cancer. Uh, the, simplest, uh, uh, the simplest way to understand it is if a gene gets mutated, it then hyperfunctions, and the normal tissue becomes cancer. And again, in these particular tumors, we're seeing some of those events. But what's unique about it, I think, what's unique about the carcinosarcoma so far is that there's another event, which is the, the DNA is stored in chromosomes, and it's wrapped in something called chromatin, which is a series of proteins. And the early data that we have, and, and there's, there um, have been a couple of other small groups who've suggested this also, is that that packaging is abnormal. And the reason why it's important to identify that is there's a whole new set of drugs that are called chromatin remodeling drugs, and they're coming into the clinic. And so they may be very relevant in the treatment of this disease. How far are we from the molecular analysis to actually being able to take those new drugs that are coming and test them on yeah. some of this. So of course, it's always, it's always difficult with research to predict these things, sure. but to be perfectly honest, I think we're as little as a year away of translating some of these findings into the design of clinical trials. Um, and so we're very, we're, we're positioned so well for that here at Mass General, and the team is um, very motivated to do that. All right, can you tell me a little bit about the research team and the different components that they're working on? Yeah, so certainly um, it involves extensively my laboratory, which we're sitting in right now in the Jackson building. Uh, and that, uh, that team has uh, eight uh, postdocs, MDs and PhDs. Um, and they're doing a lot of the um, molecular uh, analysis, and they're also assisting with obtaining the tissues mm -hmm. from the patients in the clinic, which is not easy. Mm -hmm. has to be all ethically and IRB approved. Uh, we need to do it in a way that is uh, safe and comfortable for the patients. And of course, this patient population is highly motivated, and it's a wonderful group of women who are very dedicated to providing the appropriate tissues to answer these questions. Now, in order to be successful in the analysis of tumor like this, we need to reach way beyond one lab. And so we have uh, engaged actually a neuro-oncologist, somebody who deals with uh, tumors of the brain. And you might think that's kind of odd, but she, Priscilla uh, is a wonderful scientist, physician scientist, who's very interested in um, these particular tumors and is assisting us in the sequencing of them. She has a collaborative uh, arrangement with the Broad Institute, which is probably one of the top three sequencing institutes uh, in the world, and they're across the street in Cambridge, so they're involved. And then um, we have several pathologists who are gynae pathologists who have expertise in being able to carefully look at these tumors under the microscope. And that's been very, very helpful for us to identify the right cases. 
dissect them and obtain the nucleic acids to do the analysis. And then finally, we have some really high level advisors. Brad uh, Burstein is um, a spectacular scientist who's advising us in this uh, effort. He's an expert in methylation and chromatin structure of tumors. And so um, that's obviously very relevant because of what I said a few minutes ago. This tumor, in many ways, is a tumor of chromatin remodeling. You talked about uh, obtaining tissue from patients and and are you in need of more additional tissue samples because I know that there's a number of women who uh, ask me how can I help can I send my tumor can we participate so are you in need of tissue yeah so that the straight the easy answer is absolutely mm -hmm. you know, again this is a tumor that's not common so getting large collections is hard and numbers are important in this analysis. If we are analyzing small numbers of tumors, we might overestimate or underestimate a particular molecular problem. So we need fairly large numbers. More importantly, we're now evolving from having analyzed what we call formal and fixed paraffin embedded material. These are the these are the tumors that are removed from the patient. They go to the path lab and they are fixed. They're extremely helpful. But there are only there are certain assays that can only be done on fresh or frozen material, so we're really looking for that. And how would we find that? How how would you have to find a woman who is uh, has a remission, has a reoccurrence, and 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 is that would that be the likely source of the tumor? Yeah, I think the most common source would be a patient who has suffered a recurrence, has a radiologically visible uh, site of tumor uh -huh. that can be safely biopsied. Uh, we already have a IRB approved protocol to do this. We've done it several times. It's safe, non, I can't say it's non-invasive, it's invasive, but um, a quick um, safe procedure, which gives us enough tumor to analyze, both for the project, but also for that patient. Now, an alternative approach is at the time of initial diagnosis. Sure. That's tricky, though, because as you probably know, when patients are operated on, most of that material ends up in the path lab and ends up being fixed very quickly. Right away. Correct. Okay.